Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're going to be talking about the standards and critical thinking. I just finished a live webinar on how to lesson plan, and I talked a lot about standards and objectives, and I had a few questions in the webinar that I thought I would do a follow-up video for. Let's get started. So just a couple days ago, I did a live webinar for how to lesson plan, and I walked through how to find your academic standards, how to turn them into objectives, how to use them in chat GPT to plan your lessons, and so on. If you're interested in that video, I highly recommend it. I will link it up here and in the description below. So definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more about lesson planning by using the standards and objectives. I got a few questions throughout that webinar and after that webinar that I I thought I would do a follow-up video for. The first question was, how do I differentiate the standards? Now, I understand that this is coming from a new teacher and we are constantly talking about differentiation, differentiation, please differentiate your instruction to meet the needs of all students. And you hear that a lot as a teacher. But I want you to know that we do not differentiate standards. We differentiate instruction. So here's the difference. The standards are the measure that students must meet. That measure does not change. We don't bring it down. We don't bring it up. We don't water it down. It is a benchmark. Just like if you are trying to pass your teacher certification exam, there is a standard that you must meet. And we don't differentiate those specific benchmarks. Those are set in stone. They are developed by the state with a group of educators and policymakers, and they do not change. And we as teachers do not change them. What we do change and modify and differentiate is our instruction. Now, if let's just say the standard is here and let's just say it is an English language arts standard for seventh grade. OK, and it's about reading informational text. That standard is here. But some students may have a hard time meeting that standard. Maybe their reading levels aren't high enough. Perhaps their fluency isn't proper. They, they don't have enough accuracy, rate, speed, and all of that in their reading. Or maybe their vocabulary is not up to par. And so they're having a hard time meeting that standard. What we do as teachers is we jump in, we use interventions, we differentiate instructions, and we try to help that student meet that standard. Now, some students will meet that standard no problem. They're already reading beyond their grade level. They do not have a hard time with comprehension. They understand vocabulary. They're just skilled readers. While other students may meet that standard, but barely meet that standard, right? They might kind of get it and they're, they're answering the questions correctly on the assessments and things like that to indicate that they've met the standard, but they're still like right there. We call those, we used to call them bubble kids. They are on grade level, but we really have to intervene and push them up a little bit to make sure they stay on grade level. And then we have the students way down at the bottom who have a hard time even getting close to the standard. Now, some students will not meet that standard in the year that you are instructing them. In fact, some students, it might take several years or several semesters to meet that standard. But the standard does not change. And so what we need to do as instructors is figure out what those students need and then differentiate instruction accordingly. Now, how do we figure out what they need in order to meet the standard? Well, we usually do a series of assessments, and I just did a video on that as well, and I will link that up. But usually as teachers, we use formative assessments to inform our instruction. So let's say we give a test and the student did not do well on the test, and it indicates to us that the student is struggling with a particular standard, a particular skill, whatever. Then we can decide to do small group instruction with that student and others who are having a hard time meeting that standard. We could do one-on-one -on -one interventions where we work with the student one-on-one. -on -one. We can provide the student with ancillary materials, meaning supplemental materials to help the student. Perhaps the student is an English language learner and the student is having a hard time reading in English. And so we might help that student by taking a bilingual approach, by supporting that student in his or her home language. There's all kinds of different interventions we can use and we would do that the best we can. Now you might be saying, 
I have 25 kids. Some of you have more than that. And how am I supposed to differentiate to make sure every kid is meeting the standard? Well, that's the challenge. And it doesn't always happen and it doesn't always happen perfectly. But what we want to try to do as teachers is to look at the data on whatever assessment we have just given and figure out what students are struggling with and then target those areas and use small group, whole group, maybe the whole class is struggling on it, individualized attention, things like that, the best we can. Now, if you have 25 students and you know, it's Tuesday and you're barely getting through the day and you don't have time to differentiate for every single skill. That's totally normal. But we want to get into the mode of zeroing in on what students need and doing our best to pull them along, to push them up, up, up to meet those standards. All right. So we did get a bunch of questions on how do I differentiate the standards without watering them down? You don't water down anything, okay? We still wanna push students towards critical thinking. We still wanna push students towards those higher level skills. And yes, you are gonna have students who really struggle with that, but we can constantly be pushing, pushing, supporting, scaffolding, pushing them up towards that standard. The reason why we never wanna lower standards is because when we lower standards, we, it's almost not fair for the student. So for example, let's say you have a group of kids who went to a school in a different neighborhood and the standards for those kids are really high and all the kids strive and they meet these standards and they have these skills and they're critical thinkers and all of that. And then we have another neighborhood of kids and we, you know, lowered the standard. Let's say we made it easier on them. Okay. Well, what happens is as that other group of students goes through the school, they've met that higher standard. So they're in a better position to go to college for a job. They have higher order thinking skills, but the students who we lowered the standard for, we kind of didn't give them what they needed to compete with those other students who had a higher standard. So that's why we keep standards standard across the entire country, because we want to make sure that we never lower the standard, but we do provide scaffold supports and targeted interventions in order to push students up. Now, again, that is in an ideal world. You're not always going to be able to do that in your day to day, but we want to make sure we try to do that as much as possible. Another comment I got from a teacher was, how do I differentiate for my ELLs who cannot think critically? Now, I think what this teacher meant to say was, how do I differentiate instruction for my ELLs who cannot think critically in the second language? So I want everybody to be very careful here. Students who are English language learners are critical thinkers, just like students whose first language is English. The only difference is they're not speaking the second language yet, but it doesn't mean that they don't have critical thinking skills in their home language. And I say this because I fell into this trap as a teacher as well. So I had a group of students who were monolinguals. They only spoke one, one language and it was their home language. And they were from another country. They were from Central America and they just got to the United States and they were in my biology class. And of course, you know, I'm giving them ancillary materials. I'm giving stuff in their home language. I, there's a paraprofessional with them translating for them and we're doing our best to meet their needs. But, you know, I got another 25 kids and I'm going through all the lessons and things like that. And I'm a new teacher. And so I just assumed that because they couldn't speak the language, they didn't know what I was talking about. We were talking about cellular division at the time. And so I just had it in my head and it's kind of like, a human thing to do that if someone can't understand you, then they must not know what I'm talking about. But in fact, after I talked to the paraprofessional who had been translating for these students, she told me that they absolutely understood the concepts that I was talking about because they had already done cellular division in their school before they came to the United States. And so what happened was I had this thing in my head that because they couldn't speak the language, they couldn't think critically about the content. And that is not true. So what I started to do was I started to give them the ancillary materials in their home language so they could think critically about it. So I just want to caution everybody when we're talking about standards, your ELLs, your special education students, your students from different races, genders, 
all different students with all different abilities can be critical thinkers, are critical thinkers. And it's our job to figure out how to get them to think critically by using the supports needed. For my ELLs in my class, I needed to give them the information in Spanish because once they saw it in Spanish, they could think critically in their home language. They couldn't yet think critically in the second language because they weren't there yet. They hadn't become fluent enough in English, which would have been their second language, to you know, communicate in a critical thinking way to me, but they could absolutely think critically when I gave it to them in their home language. And so let's just be careful when we're talking about standards that we are not lumping students whose first language is not English as they are unable to think critically because language has nothing to do with cognition. I mean, obviously you have to think to speak a second language, right? But you're still a critical thinker in French, if you speak French or Spanish or English. If you went to another country, I'm, I'm talking to my English speakers here. If you went to another country and there was a language that you didn't speak, you're, you didn't all of a sudden become not a critical thinker, right? You still think critically all day long. You're just thinking critically in your first language. So be careful when we talk about that. We, we call it deficit thinking. And I've fallen into the trap of deficit thinking before where I thought, oh, this person doesn't speak the language. He or she must not understand this concept or he or she must not know when really it's just he or she does not speak my language and I need to meet that student where they are. All right. So those were the two questions that came up from my webinar. I hope this helps you today. Please let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about this particular topic. I'll be doing more videos on that. And if you haven't had a chance to attend the webinar, I'm going to link everything up in the description below. When you sign up, you get some free materials, some templates. In the webinar, I go through how to use chat GPT to plan your lessons and find standards and all of that. And I have some extra chat GPT prompts for you and some instructions instruction on how to use that tool. So definitely check out in the description and click the link and it will take you to the form to sign up. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.